pay motivates, right? I mean, it's the most stupidly obvious statement one can imagine. Of course it motivates. Why do we work otherwise? But does it really? Let's say that your boss walks up to you and says, you've been doing a great job. You had lots of value. We love having you around. You're a real contributor. Here is a 10% raise. Are you happy? Sure, you're happy. I mean, you're pretty psyched, 10%. That's not bad. But is it likely to create 10% greater performance? Probably not. Now, you're going to continue doing a good job, of course, and maybe your loyalty to the company will increase somewhat. But 10% increased productivity? That's probably not going to happen. All right, so that's with a 10% raise. But now let's say that your employer walks up and says, hey, you know what, rough times, eh, we're not getting the same business we are, we're going to have to cut your pay by 10%. Now how do you feel? Odds are you wouldn't be psyched. You would be a little down. You might even leave work early that day to kind of go home and gather yourself a bit. And you know what, you might even start looking for another job. So watch. A 10% increase in pay did not, more than likely, create 10% additional performance and productivity. However, a 10% decrease in pay, yeah, that's almost certainly going to bring about reduced productivity and performance, and in fact, will probably cause the employee to look around for another job. So, are you still sure that pay is a motivator? Today, we are talking about Herzberg's motivation two-factor theory. Now, what do we mean by two-factor theory? Let me show you. Now, it could be really tempting to think that job satisfaction runs along one continuum. On one side, we have satisfied, and on the other side, we have dissatisfied. However, Herzberg says this is not necessarily the case. He contends that satisfied and dissatisfied both constitute their own continuum. So, let's take a look at this. He says, listen, you've got not satisfied and satisfied, but then you also have dissatisfied and not dissatisfied. So, what do these two continua look like in practice? Well, let's first look at motivation factors, aka the satisfiers. These are things that, by and large, if you increase these factors in the workplace, employees will be more satisfied. Now, one of the reasons they're more satisfied is these tend to be intrinsic motivators, things that are internal to the employee. So we're talking about performance and a sense of achievement, recognition, job status, responsibility, opportunities for advancement and personal growth, and the nature of the work itself. If these things are strong and speak to the employee's needs and desires, then your employees are going to be motivated to perform. On the other hand, we have hygiene factors, also known as dissatisfiers. Now, dissatisfiers, or the hygiene factors, tend to be extrinsic meaning they are rewards given from outside the employee and so don't have the same meaning to the individual. Now, extrinsic motivators or the dissatisfiers are things like pay and work conditions, the physical work environment, relationship with coworkers, relationships with the manager, or competence of the manager themselves, and workplace rules and policies. Now, these things are in place in all organizations. I'm not saying that they're not, but the key difference is that people are not motivated to perform because you have a really great, you know, I don't know, casual Friday policy or a free soda policy. That's not what's going to increase performance. These are things that you need to have in place in order for performance to exist in the first place at all. Now, there's a reason these are called hygiene factors. Um, it's a, it's a well-chosen term. A hygiene factor is something that keeps you from becoming ill versus improves your health. So, for example, let's take brushing your teeth. 
If you brush your teeth daily, your teeth will not become healthier. You will not increase the health of your teeth and gums. However, you will decrease the odds of your teeth developing cavities and gingivitis in the gums and all that sort of stuff. So they are things you need to do just to keep things healthy. So when we talk about things like, you know, relationship with employees or, or workplace policies or the color of the walls and the working conditions and, and even pay, these are things that you need to provide employees just to get them to come into work, right? Not to elicit greater performance and enthusiasm and engagement out of them. So with this understanding, let's look at the idea of pay, okay? So let's get past the whole clickbait idea that pay doesn't matter. First of all, yes, it does depend on where one is in one's career. So if you are earning less and you really want to move up that, that ladder, yeah, pay tends to matter more when we are in the beginning stages of our career versus the latter stages of our career. Furthermore, a raise in pay, that 10% raise, well, it may increase loss aversion. The idea that, well, if I start slacking off, I may lose my job, so I'm going to make sure I don't slack off because I'm making pretty good money now and I don't want to lose that. That's loss aversion. We also have the possibility of some increased loyalty to some degree. It's a good paying job. I want to keep it. Again, loss aversion. And the company treats me right, so I want to treat them right. Still, these are hygiene factors. After all, not slacking off or increased loyalty to the company is not the same as increased performance and, and productivity on your part. Now, let's look at a real-world example. During the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of hospitals had to cut the hours and pay of their employees. And this created a lot of turnover among the staff. Now, obviously, burnout played a part, but decreased pay definitely played a part as well. So as Ed Young with The Atlantic put it, many have taken stock of their difficult working conditions and inadequate pay and decided that instead of being resigned, they will simply resign. So yes, decrease hours, decrease pay, decrease salary. These things contributed to attrition among the workforce, attrition that we're still dealing with today. Now, yes, this is just a theory, and it is not going to apply equally to all people. That's one of the things about motivational theories. Some people are motivated by some things more than others, and other people vice versa, all right? So some people are really, really motivated by pay. And so if you work on commission and so forth, yeah, pay sort of has a big deal going on around it. On the other hand, some folks are more motivated by the people they work with or the type of work they do. Nevertheless, you know what? It's not hard to see how the simple application of casual Friday or free sodas or really nice chairs is not going to necessarily bring about increased performance. And that's what Herzberg really wanted to convey to us. So there you are. You now have a competitive advantage because you have a greater understanding of what will elicit greater productivity and performance from your employees versus what you just need to do to get them to show up and do the work. You got to pay to play and pay is what you pay to play. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me. And until we talk again, have a fantastic day.